camera on them uh, so you can tell when you're touching or scraping you get that uh, audible feedback and they were doing an experiment so they had some piezos in the uh, in the manipulator jaws and they were trying to do a haptic feedback with the jaw but we all the operators really liked the speaker effect that the piezos made and we couldn't let go of the thing fast enough when it started buzzing your hand. Looks like you got something right there. Right. Worth taking a look. Worth taking a look. There and there, and that'll bring you back to the track. So. Roger that. I'm trying to get the Argus center center back up. This is also uh, obviously ground truthing his uh, Norbit map with the targets that are on. Yeah. <laughs> well, one of these days, what I'd like to do is this like close-up Norbit map. All right. I'd like that to use to be able to use that to localize yourself to the high map, 100%. the uh, high altitude map, and really yeah. dial in the position. Yeah. And then we could have a high altitude general area map and a super high resolution low altitude map. That would be sweet. Yeah. I think that's possible. Yeah, because I mean, if you look in the in that, you can see this. We can see tiny stuff when we're close. Yeah. Yeah. Even our <laughs> forward-looking multi-beams. Uh, first time I used one was on a dive support job. Yeah. And uh, we could see the diver walking across the seabed, and we could see what kind of tool. That's awesome. He's holding in his hand. There it is. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. You have no idea how happy that makes me. <laughs> It makes me pretty happy too. Yeah. I don't have to rely on this. No, I. Uh uh. Oh. They, yeah, they, maybe they're force talking you. Now you know how it feels to sit up here. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Yeah. Tell us how you really feel, Dan. <laughs> Sometimes Bridge it gets to a, have little another wild, to do a little wild in the back row. There should be something right to your left right now. Yeah, the other. Unless that's it. No. Oh. Maybe it is. The USBL has been a little wandery. Oh, no. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Even, like, the strike of it is right. See? Yeah. How it's, like, long north and south. So, if you zoom in on that now, does it get more detail? Or is no. It, I. It just this, is the, this, is, this is the amount of detail that I rendered it with. Right. Yeah. That but yeah, sure enough, that's it. Detail. Exactly. Totally. Hey, hang on. You can see the shadow there. Yeah, oh, I, I see what you're doing. You're taking pictures of your map with the ROV yeah. in the background looking at the ground truth. That's right. Sweet. Chris is interested in the big rock, and I'm interested in the little rocks behind, yeah. <laughs> behind it. Well, we're here. We can do yep. whatever you want, yep. Larry. No, 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 that's great. We can do both. Yeah, I'm sorry. We we had a uh, distraction back here. We were trying to sort out sort out a, a source of noise coming over the, the headphones. I think we I think we've got it sorted out now. Chris, could you zoom out a bit on the HyPAC survey? Yes, sec? sir. Sorry. Thank you. Good. Good. Oh, uh, more than enough. It looks like up here the ground starts just getting 
rocky or less of mm -hmm. a sediment base, right? Like right. It looks yeah. like there's a lot more structure to the mm -hmm. general floor. Right. So, so our big uh, interest is going to be, you know, getting up to the top and then over into the next saddle. Yeah. And and testing to see if we see the flows again in the next saddle. So, is that all manganese and crested? Well, that's on what the I'm top of this? You can zoom in on top of that and take a take a closer look. I'm quite interested to see what all that is sitting on top of there. There's an uh, interesting view in the uh, between the all three cameras. Video, can you iris down just a bit, please? Yeah, no, I think that's that's the original the original rock, which was a conglomerate of some sort. It looks kind of fused yeah, in there. Yeah, eh? yeah. Interesting. Nice, nice perspective there with that rock in the background. Nice uh, dual perspective looking yeah. down and forward. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Okay, down lights off. Oh, look at that sponge sitting on there. <laughs> Bridge nav, two five meters due south. Two five one eight zero. So Larry, it's, it's uh, from what I understand, like part of this seamount had been explored, but uh, the other part had under the, which is the part that we're on, right? We this. Yeah, there there have been some Okeanos uh, ROV dives here, and uh, I think a hurl dive too, the from Pisces, but they were both on the other side of the seamount, and so we've come on this side to see what we see here. Uh, was it similar to, to what we're finding here? Th those dives were really aimed at looking at the distribution of um, corals and, and, and crinoids. Um, and there they are. Yeah, but they, they interestingly, they, they uh, left, it was a whole program that, that was looking at the, this whole range of seamounts, the geologist seamounts. And this was the one they, they found had the least um, in terms of uh, life um, and they were they were curious about that because uh, each of them uh, particularly one very flat top one called cross seamount um, had, had tremendous abundances um, they thought maybe because this was a little deeper than the others uh, in terms of how it was in intersecting the the deep current flows Hey, Manel, what do you think of that boulder? I gotta say, I like that boulder. That is a nice boulder. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Shrek has been a big theme on, uh, especially for Rye, I think. <laughs> what uh, caused all the, looks like someone carved on it. Yeah, it, this is it. really interesting. The, the if, if we were in a glacial regime, I say, oh, those are glacial striations, you know, indica indications of the, but, uh, not the Makes me think of the, uh, like the spirit rock outside of high school, <laughs> like maybe like all the fish <laughs> high school, they're just like spray painting it and tagging it.
What could cause that? Well, I'm, I'm seeing That's a little weird. sort of, you can see there's almost layering in, in this rock. Now it's a, and, and if those layers are slightly different in their composition, one layer may be more yeah. susceptible to erosion than the yeah. other, and so we're seeing. Huh. But and these little yellow dots, is that is that a life form, or is that something in the rock itself? I think they might be old holdfasts from sponges or corals that have fallen off. But it could be something else. No, yeah, no, no, I... I, I so if you look at the bottom, do you see the dead ones that fell off? Yeah. Yeah, so somebody's asking, uh, was this ever area ever near a glacier or an iceberg? No, it's no. It's young. It's very... No, no, this is not young. No, it's th not. Th this, uh, this is actually old, old, an old seamount, 82 million year old seamount. Oh, wow. And there's one of those uh, anemone that always are on the underside. Yeah. I think actually that might be a bersingid. Uh, I reckon so. Or, yeah, let's see. Yeah. I think it's one of these. Oh, really? Oh, Ridge, so Ridge now. Close. <laughs> yeah, close. They look very similar, especially yeah. hanging out beneath the rock. That's a Ferraid sponge. I think that might be one of the first the living hand. ones we've seen. Is that the one Second, that kind of has maybe? the lobes? Like yeah. Oh, look at the view in the fish eye. With so that. yeah, we were seeing a lot of crumbles of those when we were earlier looking at the the dead sponges with uh, Dr. Ballard. There are a lot of the uh, fallen crumble bits of that that type of sponge. Um, and the fossilized sponges we've collected on previous cruises have also been that same species. Okay, I put a complete turn in my tether on that rock. Turn and burn the other way. Roger. Okay, we got to start heading up. Oh, what's that far ahead there? What is this flat looking thing here? This one? Yeah. Oh, it's just a, oh, it's just a, the base of the rock. Okay. It's totally deceived. Just a good fireworks point. Those are cool looking. Uh, we have a question about how old sponges get. How long can they live? Oh, sorry about <laughs> that. Uh, I zone out when I'm typing, typing notes. Um, yeah, they could, depending on the size, they could be up to hundreds of years old. Um, things here grow really, really slowly. Um, so, I mean, it would be hard to give an estimate um, by just looking at the sponge. I think there would have to be some, uh, what is it, isotope analysis done or something like that on, on them to get an exact date of their age. I've certainly found some sponges in my house that I, I suspect are hundreds of years old. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure the one, the one in our kitchen <laughs> sink is a hundred years old. And somebody comments that it's interesting how there's a coral or a sponge in the crevices. Did those holders fall down? Like yeah, I think that's probably like the case. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I've seen quite a few fallen sponges. Yeah. And again, this goes back to what uh, what Bob was saying that uh, this is this is a much older area, so we get to see many generations of the organisms here. 
Oh, you're making a dash now, aren't you? Taylor Ann, I'm sorry I'm hitting you with all the questions. I'm, I just no don't know anything. <laughs> but you will learn, yeah. just like I did. <laughs> <laughs> what is isotope analysis? Oh, man, you're asking me the wrong yeah. question. I think, I think Larry is better at right, like answering I'll, that I'll, one. I'll give a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Larry's tracking center, so just kind of keep tracking down that line. Ma many, uh, uh, many... Uh, keep going back and forth across. Elements yep. have... Bridge, several states, like we think of oxygen three zero sixteen, two, two, five. but there's also oxygen uh, eighteen. Yeah, like, yeah, I like to keep an eye on the ship. Though. Carbon, we think of carbon as carbon twelve, but there's also a carbon thirteen, and th these other forms of the element are um, called isotopes, and they've developed very sophisticated techniques to uh, be able to look at the ratios of the common isotope, something like carbon-12, to the ratio of the less common one, carbon-13. And um, those ratios often give an indication of many different things, including how old something is, because there's different decay rates to those different isotopes. And so by looking at the changes in those ratios, they can get an idea of how old something is. Um, for, for young stuff, they use the carbon isotopes, and they call it radiocarbon dating. For older things, there are all kinds of other isotopes they use, uranium, thorium, strontium. Um, so rocks, or these kinds of rocks that we see on the seafloor, when we said That's they're 82 little, uh, million years old, lobster. that was done yeah. to uranium thorium or uranium strontium or strontium or thorium strontium. dating techniques and again it's looking at the ratios of those isotopes which decay at different rates wow i will definitely process that and probably uh read a couple articles on that because that seems that seems really interesting yeah we've got a, a different diversity of coral here on this rock looks like we have a fairly large metallogorgia i don't know if i've seen one with that wide um, so that's the one that looks almost like very fine, like a flower on the right-hand side. Uh, it has a brittle star associate oh, with I it. Oh, I see. Off on the far right. Yeah. And then right in front of us is a bottle brush chrysogorgia. Um, so what else do we have here? Looks like we might have another metallogorgia hanging out down there. Um, and then on the top of the rock, we saw a precious coral, a uh, coralid. It was a hot pink color. Uh, Did you see the... Uh Blind lobster, blind shrimp. Oh, I did not. Thank you. I will notate that. Um, and then looks like we also have the base of a dead sponge here, potentially. Yeah, this looks like it could be a paragorgia. It looks a little bit thicker than hemicorallium. Um, sometimes it's really hard to tell the difference, so we could stick with the Coralidae ID on this hot pink one. Okay, let's. Uh there, just coming into the lower right, middle of the screen now. Yeah, blind lobster. Thank you. A viewer is commenting that you hear a lot about carbon dating when you watch uh, arche uh, archaeological shows about mummies and things. Yeah, because again, it's the carbon dating that's used for dating uh, recent things. When, when we talk about geological time scales of tens or, and hundreds of millions of years, it, it, the, the carbon isotopes don't exist anymore. The, 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 so you need to go to much, much, what we call longer, longer series isotopes. Bridge now, four zero meters, two zero five.
As long as you don't drink it here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pulling you around. Oh. Come on, Adeline. Okay, keep so up. As long as, everything's, as long as everything's on auto, <laughs> that's okay. And if we see something really exciting, we'll go and get you. <laughs> He's going. Sorry, I okay. got a little All carried right. away there. That's all right. Taylor we'll find Ann. something to look at while we're waiting. I have another her. biology question. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Taylor Ann. Hopefully what? I can answer it. <laughs> <laughs> what do the, uh, the, the, is it the Venus flytrap coral? Oh. Uh, what do they eat? Oh, the, the flytrap anemones? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, they can feed on pretty much anything small that can crawl into it, um, unfortunately. <laughs> so, like, uh, I think any, like, shrimp? Um, okay. Small crustaceans or amphipods, mm. um, something larger than than the uh, particulate matter that's falling from the, the the higher up water column area. That's so interesting. Yeah. So wait, are I have literally? I love asking so many questions because it really just exposes how little I know. <laughs> um, oh, actually, they they do feed exclusively on detritus. So correct. Let me correct myself. Uh, on what? detritus so uh falling matter oh wow huh that's interesting so different than um shallow water species yeah, uh, gotcha. three meters. so Dan, what would falling matter what yeah, would qualify uh, as Dan, falling if we, matter if we could have a zoom in to the the little black rocks there i go well, i'm trying to figure out just what these are Uh, on the left or the right? Larry? Well, the right's fine, doesn't matter. And the smaller ones, I'm mostly interested in. Uh, right. Is that a sea cuke over there I see? Is that an anatomy? I think so. Could be. That's a two count for cuke. <laughs> but yes, the yeah, Venus flytrap and enemies get a couple oh, of pictures captures. Of, yeah, gotcha. Please. Um, they wait for anywhere in here, Larry. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, video uh, fall, fall detritus soon, to kind of copy that. Swim towards its tentacles or fall towards not, its tentacles. Not the big ones. Stay away from the big one. It's, it's a little ones. Uh. And that is not a sea cucumber. It looks like it's a sponge. Any particular one you want to see? Uh, it's the little ones that I'm, I'm more interested in. Off to, to the right. Just move right a little if you can. Right. Pan right. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Yeah, I still don't know, but okay. okay thank you. Go wide, thanks. Copy that. Now you can come up. If you come up while we're zoomed in, it'll it'll. Bridge, bridge now. Four zero one two zero. I Sorry, Taylor, sorry, and I uh, didn't two, quite zero, zero. get the end of that. Could you say it again? Yeah. So uh, the flytrap and enemies will wait for food to drift into its tentacles for mm -hmm. it to feed. So I was mixing up the shallow water species and how they feed versus um, the deep sea counterpart species. Gotcha. So falling matter, what would qualify as falling matter? Uh, so to try to, so any, you know, organic material falling, like the marine snow that we're seeing. Gotcha. Yeah. So not necessarily the shrimp and the No, guys. yeah. Surprising, right? Mm. The more you know, the less you don't. <laughs> it's, oh, that's the most important thing is to stay curious. Yeah. yeah. Ask That's, questions. Oh, yeah. I love a question. Me personally, me and a question, always going to go together. <laughs> Kristen's leaving us. Bye, Kristen. Bye, I, Kristen. I tried to get convince her to put a headset on. <laughs> uh, one of the viewers is asking about a cup coral. Ah. Ooh. Did Yeah. Did they see one? Do they spot one, or are they uh, just ask they, about them? It literally just says cup coral, question mark. Ah. Yeah. Negative yeah. cup coral. I haven't seen any. Um, we would definitely have to get a close zoom to confirm. But so far, I think we've just been seeing small sponges um, that could, you know, give the illusion of a, of a cup coral. Um, but cup corals are hard corals. Um, they're very beautiful. Uh, they're they're uh, very hard skeleton, and then uh, it, it kind of makes like a cup formation and then they have very soft tissue uh, for the the polyp at the top Look at that. so hopefully we'll see one at some point 
That would be cool. Oh, what's that? That looks like an exclamation point. It, it does, like does look like blaster. an exclamation point. Oh, it's our first uh, polio pogon sponge. Polio pogon. Yeah, that's fun to say, isn't it? Polio pogon, <laughs> polio pogon. Had a hard time figuring out how to pronounce that one for the longest. <laughs> I could still be wrong. <laughs> Also, sorry for the food, but it uh, looks like a drumstick. <laughs> it absolutely yeah, the shape of this like one definitely we does. We have our, our ongoing list of pizza boxes, blooming onion, today we'll popcorn. And yeah, this side doesn't look as much. This side looks like a squash, like a like a stuffed squash that you're about to stuff. <laughs> so actually, when we see these sponges, sometimes they're really square and they remind me of SpongeBob. Aww. Oh, yeah. this Sponge is the SpongeBob one. See, as soon as you said SpongeBob, I just really <laughs> <laughs> You know, valid. <laughs> That's really fair. If we get, if we go down that road, <laughs> we may never come back. <laughs> Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> <laughs> You think it's 4 a.m. the way we're... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Giggling. just a very quiet course. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dan, for putting up with us. <laughs> yeah. We very much Mind appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> we've, we've been left unsupervised. Larry stepped out. Jonathan's not ah. here. Rachel's not here. <laughs> I think Dan is probably Squidward, so... That makes <laughs> <laughs> I've been forced to watch way too much Spongebob. <laughs> I never watched Spongebob as a kid. Yeah, me You know, either. you didn't really miss me much. Either. Well, <laughs> yeah. you know the basics. That's all you need. That's true. Although it's really funny because so many of my friends have, and they'll just quote Spongebob all the time. Really? And I just have this blank look on my face. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's okay, you quote Shakespeare. I do quote Shakespeare. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're good. Just stick with the, sh the Shakespeare. Yeah. <laughs> My contribution. <laughs> yeah. Would it be out of place to start playing like the Rocky theme song? I think Jonathan would get mad. We'd get our uh, our YouTube uh, video would be um, what's it called? You know, copyright infringement. yeah, copyright infringement. Mm -hmm. There you go. But I'm just I'm trying to think of rock jokes, right? <laughs> and I can just think of Rocky <laughs> going up the steps, going up. Maybe the slope. should I Google like geology jokes? Oh my gosh. Oh no, Ridge, Larry. Do you have any good geology jokes? Two zero zero. There's nothing funny about geology. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way to come back. Was, there is nothing funny about geology. Ten geology puns that will rock your world. Oh my gosh. It's already great. Just that title alone. All right, I'm turning off the video encoders. Okay. All right there. I'm turning off SPL. That was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> was a joke. Me over here getting ready to log. <laughs> turning off. I was literally, I was literally like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I will stop this car. <laughs> Here's okay, another, but now these are good. Another one of these dark streaks. Oh, no, that's actually a, a little ledge. You want geology puns? <laughs> Give me a minute. I'll dig some up. Ah. <laughs> Oh, I missed it almost. All right, <laughs> Rachel, you can go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's that. It's, uh, an, I think it's another Metallogorgia. I'm just not sure why it's, they're so large. I, I'm not used to seeing them this big. Um, and then the a flytrap anemone. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, so the fluffy part on the mm -hmm. top with the fine polyps, that's the actual coral. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. 
So how, how do, oh, I'm so sorry, Taylor Ann. <laughs> How do they stack on top of each other like that? Yeah, so the metallogorgia, uh, actually that a whole entire stalked thing is the, the whole part of that coral. So mm -hmm. that's just part of the skeleton. Okay. And then somehow that flytrap anemone just kind of settled there. Um, probably either moved very slowly over time or settled there. Interesting. Moving into the neighborhood, I guess. Yeah. Can you imagine just being a coral and you spend so much time and then this <laughs> silly little fly trap anemone just just like I like Lands comes to you. weigh you down yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah if it if it was any larger it probably would be a problem for that coral and could potentially take oh. it out oh wow. Aww. yeah um, but it looks like they were you know coexisting peacefully at the, for the moment um, but it's again hot. getting higher up in the the water column is a benefit for that anemone mm, gotcha that's not a symbiotic relationship it's just like it would be commensalism, mm -hmm. well, right? Because one would be benefited, but the other's not affected as long as it doesn't get too oh. big. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Could you so say it would that be word again? Commensalism. Commensalism. Yeah. So there's cool, cool, cool. there's three types of symbiotic relationships: mm -hmm. uh, mutualism, parasitism, and commensalism. Gotcha. Seventh grade science. Ooh. I remember my seventh grade science teacher very well. Really? Did you like your seventh grade science teacher? She was insane. <laughs> in, in like a good way? Like, like she had us lost, you know, stuffed animal or um, like in a bad way? <laughs> she was just a little, uh, she was eclectic. I think that's the best word for it. Um, and if she was certainly, I've, I've, I remembered. I remember my sixth and my seventh and my eighth grade like quite fondly, and like I learned things. And for seventh grade, I just have memories of the absolutely ridiculous quotes that <laughs> I got from my seventh grade uh, science teacher um, that I'm not sure should be repeated on SPL. <laughs> I did not like my seventh grade science teacher. Really? Yeah, and I actually teach at the school that I attended. After oh. going to college at A&M, I went back home to teach back uh, at the same junior high. Wow. She's not there anymore. Um, but other teachers that I had are there, and they are awesome. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, but I really liked my eighth and my ninth grade science teacher and my high school science teachers, but mm -hmm. not my seventh grade teacher my sister went to the the same middle school that i went to and so and she's like six years younger than me and occasionally of course she would get the oh my gosh are you manel's sister and then sometimes she would come to me and she'd be like did you have this teacher <laughs> and that was in fact <laughs> this experience for my seventh grade science teacher it's really cool teaching in a school for this long mm -hmm. and then you get like all the little brothers and sisters it's really cool what's that little red guy sorry to interrupt all right but we got a little got a little friend over maybe a crinoid it's gone now Think yeah i couldn't dog. tell it might have been a, a crinoid or an anemone um, we have a question about the weight of Herc. Ooh. Since we don't have the Niskin sampler and the front bio box and all that stuff, uh, how much weight did Herc lose? I think you. I think you guys scared Dan off of SPL. No. Uh, <laughs> That's so fair. It was the SpongeBob stuff, probably. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> Oh, uh, we just had a question about the weight of the ROV and uh, if so I think I'm not sure how much weight it lost, but I think you got to think about what what really matters for operations is weight and water, mm. right? Not total mass. Uh, and I think the bio box is about neutral. So in that sense, it didn't lose any weight. Wow. But obviously it lost mass. Mm -hmm. Ah. I'd say that uh, weight in air is of uh, very big concern for the deck team, particularly the tag liners. <laughs> Who are the tag liners, Rachel? What do they do? Sure. So uh, you might have seen the uh, launch and recovery process. I mean, I know the, the dives are the highlights of Nautilus Live, but we do, uh, we do actually stream launch and recovery. Yeah. And because, so uh, when we're putting Kirk and Atalanta over, you know, there's 
when it's on, uh, there's a period between when it's on deck and when it's actually in the water where you actually have both of the vehicles are suspended either from the Herc is, goes over on a crane and Atlanta goes over from the A-frame, which is basically like a crane, mm -hmm. but the A-frame only really moves in one direction. Mm -hmm. um, but because, so once you actually pick the vehicle up and it's actually, it's suspended on a cable, so because we're on a ship that's moving and we, you know, whatever our sea state is in rough seas, it'll range, move around range more. Range four zero two zero zero. Um, so the role of the tag liners on the deck team is you're trying to, you actually are holding lines so that the vehicle doesn't swing around um, like a wrecking ball when ah. you're, when you're in that intermediate state between secured on deck and, you know, totally floating in water. Gotcha. Yeah, I've seen it happen a bunch. I just didn't know that. Guys had a guys had a name, the tag liners. I like it. Yeah? Yeah, I've seen you out there, Rachel and of course Rai. Uh, yeah. Sounds like you guys also come up with cool catchphrases for different things. <laughs> the tag liners. <laughs> in case you hadn't noticed, my head is just full of puns. <laughs> um, that's actually my natural state. Just <laughs> punny. Yeah, another thing our viewers may not be aware of because you've got a, you have a couple different cameras in the van, but uh, right at the very top above the video wall, there's actually a laughter and an applause sign that light up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be great. <laughs> Maybe we should get a laugh track on here, <laughs> or just like a bump, but um. Yeah, that would that would be really helpful. A couple of those. I think it was really great the other day when Atalanta was in a was in its jam and <laughs> Jason just started just hopped on SPL and started making puns. <laughs> um, we got a question again about how thick the sediment is to the basement um, where we collected the nodule samples. You, you spoke about it a little bit, um, and then also what is the composition? Is it calcium carbonate, opal? Yeah, that's, that, these are, these are all good questions. Um, yeah, I think we answered the question before in terms of the thickness of the manganese layer on top, which is very, very thin. And then then, the, then uh, we have below that sediment. It looks like a light sediment. It's probably a carbonate-rich sediment. I'm sure there's always a silica component. The carbonate and the silica are both uh, in a region like this uh, from the tiny skeletons of microscopic uh, plants and animals that live in the surface waters and they only live a few weeks and... Um, they fall to the bottom, and that, that's what makes up most of the deep-sea sediment, either carbonate from mm -hmm. foraminifera and things we call nanofossils. The foraminifera is the microscopic uh, zooplankton. It's an animal. And the nanofossils, the coccoliths, are microscopic algae, the plants. Um, on the silica side, it's radial area, and these are tiny little, again, microscopic animals. Um, and... Um, Sponge spicules are made of silica too. So all those things make up the, the components uh, of, of the seafloor and diatoms are the, are the plant part of the siliceous component. How thick it is, is a, to the basement is a, is a very good question. Um, we said the crust was uh, about yeah. 80, 82 million years old here. And uh, depending on where it really started on the East Pacific rise, whether it started in areas of very high productivity, you can have sedimentation rates that are on the order of, uh, in this area, 10 to 15 meters per million years. And that would make it a very, very thick sediment yeah, before wow. the basement. Yeah. But I suspect it's not that thick here. Um, and uh, that uh, it, uh, the path it took was in a much lower sedimentation rate. So, so I would guess it's uh, maybe, maybe uh, 100 meters, a few hundred meters to basement, I would think. Cool. Well, that's, a, that's a guess. <laughs> that's a beautiful looking coral. Yeah. Yeah, I think what we're seeing here are, I can't tell what type of sponge that is from here, but it's definitely a glass sponge um, with some crinoids on it. Those and are then, crinoids? Wow. Yeah, there's so many different types of crinoids. Um, and then we're also seeing a corallid that high, high uh, what is it? Hot pink, thank you, that's the word. <laughs> Hot pink colored uh, coral. 
Another one of those bottle brush Chrysogorgias. Yeah, so we're seeing several different types of crinoids here. Um, the ones with the kind of feet or arm appendages on the bottom, um, I think they're known as feather stars, a common name. Yeah, I think after the the other dives where we saw like hundreds, if not thousands, of those mm -hmm. that one kind of crinoid, I was like, oh, yeah. this must be <laughs> the only kind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't much diversity of the crinoids at that site, you're right. Yeah, but this, I mean, there's the diversity, I can't talk, uh, diversity in coral that we're seeing here is just amazing. Yeah. Is that a crinoid on that? Yeah, so everything that looks kind of spiky in this frame, those are crinoids. Okay, cool, yeah. cool, cool. If it's spiky, it's a crinoid <laughs> in this frame. Oh, um, are those like the, the those little things that are jutting out? Are those like where fallen coral used to be? Yeah, they look like they could be coral hold vasts, the little uh -huh. tan to white blobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from where the sponges didn't successfully stay mounted on the, gotcha. the rock. Oh, I'm gonna pull up. Gonna pull Larry, we have a track oh, here. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, we have a question about what would be under the sediment. Would it be rock? Yeah. So um, the the crust. When we talk about the crust, this is the new oceanic crust, the basalt that uh, is formed at the ridge crest, and that's what we call the basement in a place like uh, the Pacific. That when that comes out, so by the ridge crest, there's nothing more than that basalt by the island of uh, Hawaii, where new basalt is coming out. We have nothing more than that. Um, and as that moves away from the ridge crest and starts to sink as it cools, because it's hot when it forms, uh, it starts to sink and cool. Um, these organisms in the surface water start falling down. Think of it, rain coming on it. And the older and older it gets, the further it moves away, the thicker and thicker the sediment gets. So. So what we'd expect um, without excess volcanism, without seamounts like this here, we'd expect simply the sediment overlying the basalt. But when you have a big seamount that was formed, in this case 82 million years ago, now you have this excess flowing of lava that is so high. It was, it was a huge mountain. It's still a big mountain, but when it was formed, it was even bigger. <laughs> and and so the sediment is filling around it. And so now we're seeing bridge, the, the bridge remnants of that original seamount still sticking up above that sediment that has been accumulating for for 82 million years. And the, the tops of them don't get buried often because of the currents. Again, there are currents always. And so when you have something sticking up, the currents tend to get swept, swept sweep the sediment away. The view from Triclops is really co cool. You're looking at that on uh, uh, feed three, satellite three, that Manel just pulled up for us. We have a viewer asking. Just the way Jonathan likes it. Yeah. You don't think? No, he's not back there. Um, we have a viewer asking if 
we see any landslides like we do on the northern side of the Big Island. Yeah, we haven't seen any indication here of large uh, underwater landslides uh, on, in this area so far, but we do see this evidence of this much more subtle flow down the, the valley ravines of these fine, fine manganese nodules, and that's something we had noticed on some ever other seamounts before, and it's nice to see that there's some consistency. This seems to be a, a process that that is uh, far-reaching. And somebody's asking about the watch teams. We do have three watches, um, but we're really doing Um, we're doing day dives uh, and then processing data overnight because we're doing a lot of 3D imaging. Um, so we have the, the 8 to 12 watch that usually starts a dive, uh, puts the ROVs in the water, and then there's us, the 12 to 4, and then we have the 4 to 8 watch after us. But if we were running 24 yeah, hours, so we'd, 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 we'd have to come back yeah. <laughs> at, uh, at midnight and work till 4 in the morning. Yeah. Which, which is really the normal situation. This, this, is, this is unusual that we're, we have the luxury of just one watch a day. Yeah, I really appreciate the, the data loggers who are working overnight. Yeah. So Taylor Ann, Zach. I'm not sure if Kristen's on that team. Um, but yeah, they're, they're doing some really incredible stuff with, um, yeah. with all the data that we're collecting from, from the Triclops camera yeah, and no. from Norbit. Definitely would not be possible without our data engineers. Uh, so thanks, Rachel and Mike uh, and Jonathan too for yeah making sure all of that data is ready to be analyzed and looked at. Um, there's no way we'd be able to figure that out without their help. Did you see the the three D printed model that I haven't was seen making? it finished yet, but I did yeah, see it in the process. So I think Devin actually has it. Yeah, she has zero one eight five, and she's just in the interaction room. So yeah. Awesome, I'll have to pop over and see that. Yep. I'm gonna go have a nap now. Yeah, I'm done with this. But basically, moral of the story is uh, teamwork makes the dream work. I think that was them getting detangling themselves after descent. Because they were towing when they were descending. So they probably stopped and had to spin around and yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'd like to... I'll have to get it where I can import the GeoTIFF into the 3D, like the cleaned up model into hey the guys, 3D visualization. Uh, what's a Coral's favorite Halloween movie? Favorite Halloween Coraline. movie? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I just came up with that. <laughs> That's a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Someone's I'll be here all week. Someone's asking about uh, whereabouts is deeper than the Mariana Trench. Right now, the Mariana Trench is uh, the deepest point in the ocean known. So we can say there should be nothing deeper. But yeah. one never knows. We, we've only mapped 25% of the ocean in detail. And so there may be more surprises to be found. That view in feed three is super cool. And the sponge here is a Tretropleura sponge. Say that again? <laughs> yeah, let me. Tretropleura. Tretropleura. Wow. Treacherous. <laughs> Again with the spooky thing, really. So the uh, I heard that the plan is to dive on the hydrothermal vents on Halloween. I think that's going to be super cool. Oh yeah. Definitely looking forward to that. Yes.
kind of feel like we should all scrap our costumes and come as various SpongeBob characters just for yeah. Dan. <laughs> Although I feel like he would also walk out of this watch if we did that. Probably. Oh, <laughs> uh, we have somebody wrote in with a joke about coral reefs. It says, why is the coral reef so quiet? Because the sea is silent in the <laughs> Nidarians. That's funny. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Good one. I don't think the sea's ever really silent. I mean, there's a lot, the sea is an awesome conductor of sound. <laughs> I think that that would hit better if we were on like the International Space Station right now. And so what, what is this? Like? Yeah, what is, it's another, uh, I always say this one wrong, Poliopogon uh, sponge. Here, let me l look at the spelling of it. The, the large white one? Yeah. So, yeah, somebody wrote it earlier saying Polyopogon. Oh, Polyopogon. Yeah, yeah, see, that one's a little. Oh, okay, I, I can see it. Polyopogon. Yeah. Just matters where you emphasize that that syllable there. Bridge, bridge now four zero one eight five. Chris, would you mind uh, zooming out a little on the Hypex survey display? Thank you. Oh yeah, we got. Yeah. No, it's good. We can get more targets of interest. Yep. Are we looking to be on deck at a 80? 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock again? 8 p.m., okay. yeah. yeah. So I want to keep, because to me, the the most important next spot is waypoint 6. So. <laughs> waypoint 6? Yeah. So right in the bottom of that yeah. saddle, okay. Exactly. We'll get there. The terrain isn't too crazy, so we can keep moving at a reasonable right. pace. Mm -hmm. The way I'm going to remember that pronunciation is those sponges are ready for a photo op. Nice. <laughs> op. <laughs> Probably up, but um, got to practice that one. Uh, somebody's asking yeah, about. Got to work now. Oh. Somebody's asking about uh, the size, and it's hard to tell scale from a screen of a landscape that we're unfamiliar with. That's why we have the lasers on sometimes. Yeah, it's it's often very difficult to to tell the scale. Um, if you can see, they're seeing in feed two. You you do get that that. Uh, view from, uh, from Atalanta yeah. of Hercules, and, and Hercules is kind of the size of a, a Ma small... Mail truck. Yeah. Mail truck, yeah. yeah. We, we, we kind of... So you can get an idea from that, but when we're really looking up close and trying to understand the size of things, we turn on these two green lasers. They're green because that's the frequency of light that travels best in the ocean. Um, and those two green lasers are 10 centimeters apart when they hit an object um, about four inches apart so that's a good way for us to judge judge the scale and so you see if we're doing a, a detailed survey of something or we see something very interesting we'll ask for the lasers to be turned on so that the pictures will capture that and so we have a, a scale for measuring from there I think that we compare Hercules to the size of a mail truck. It reminds me that Americans will use any measurement but the metric system. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the banana. <laughs> Hercules is approximately well, like two Ariana Grandes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's actually, way actually, more than two Ariana Grandes. <laughs> we, we have enough people here from URI to, to understand the, the Rhode Island problem that Almost every comparison of size of, of things, large things, is always to the state of Rhode Island. You know, that's yeah. yeah. <laughs> they'll, t they'll, they'll talk about a, a large piece of the ice shelf falling off that was half the size of Rhode Island. 
Places yeah. Rhode Island. Yeah, do, uh, do Rhode Island-based geologists talk about like new features as, oh yeah, it's where that fault line used to be. <laughs> All right, that one was straight fire. I can't believe that y'all didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's asking how many bananas is Herc. <laughs> uh, we might need to. We'll, are, we'll get back to you after dinner. Yeah, there there were some bananas lying around. <laughs> Which is interesting because uh, many ships I've been on will not have bananas because it's uh, it's one of these. Uh, old seamen yeah there's a superstition right about bananas that bananas are bad luck i actually uh i got on board uh an icebreaker the healy the u.s coast guard coast guard cutter icebreaker and we got on i think it was in uh in nome or somewhere in alaska and with us was uh not somebody coming on the cruise but somebody who was local and we were giving her a tour of the ship and she came into the galley and they had a pile of bananas out and just ran off the ship and her father had been a a fisherman oh, wow. all his yeah. life and she, and she said, I, I cannot be on a ship that has bananas <laughs> on it that's funny yeah. uh somebody was asking what kind of anemones those were uh i didn't see any anemones i was paying attention to those yellow coral fans <laughs> Oh, sorry. So, uh, but those were the yellow coral fans were Acanthagorgia, I believe. So we've seen two of those in the last couple seconds here. Uh, so those are some new sightings. And then we're continuing to see those crinoids. Also starting to see a couple more corallids, those hot pink corals, precious corals. What's that guy up to the, the right, up to the upper right? Yeah, so that's a ferraid sponge. It looks pretty covered in sediment or on its way out, like it might be dying or already dead, which is why it has that brown color. Same. We have a question about the nodules. Has anyone published on their geochemistry and do you have a reference? Yeah, I don't know if there's been publications about the nodules specifically from here because I don't think many of them have been sampled. I think the, the Pisces probably picked up uh, a few uh, and that might have been pursued by Hurl folks. Uh, there are some really uh, detailed uh, studies by the US Geologic Survey and I'll, I'll go find a few of those references about the chemistry of nodules and generally in the Pacific. But I, I, I offhand don't know specifically about studies from, from, the, from this area. Uh, we have a question uh, about crinoids. What's the difference between stocked crinoids and non-stocked crinoids? Uh, yeah, so the stalked crinoids cannot move. They're stuck in place. Um, but most of these other crinoids are able to swim freely. Uh, I'm sure there are other differences, but that's the most obvious difference that I know and I can think of at the moment. Um, I have not studied crinoids, but they are really interesting. Uh, and I know that uh, on my you know previous experience with uh, being on expeditions, I tend to see the free-swimming crinoids more so than the uh, sea lilies or the stalked crinoids. So it's really special when we get to see those, the sea lilies. They're really beautiful. Oh. Looks like we have some dead sponge material here too. This could be frayed sponge. Let's see, I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we got somebody who appreciates um, pronu your nice. pronunciation, Taylor Ann. Uh, they wrote in something I really appreciate about this stream is I get to hear the correct so pronunciation of things. I always read crinoid with a soft eye. Aw, yeah. thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I struggle with pronouncing some, <laughs> some of no, these things. No, but you do a really good job. We're really lucky to have you on our watch. I've learned everything I know just from being on these watches for multiple hours and um, sitting next to experts. It's amazing the things you learn over time. Bridge, bridge now, 40190. Yeah, we're starting to see a lot more fossilized bunch material over here. Here's a pronunciation joke sent in by a viewer. What does it sound like when a pterodactyl goes to the bathroom? Nothing, the P is silent. <laughs> <laughs> I see Taylor Ann over there laughing. <laughs> yeah, that's a different looking uh, sponge. Yeah. It could be in uh, the grouping of Faraday as well, but let me check these other sponges first. Is that coral dying? Might be a, a eupectelid sponge. I'm not too sure. It's very interesting. Um, on top of it, though, looks like there might have been some a basket star, um, which we have not seen many of those on this expedition so far. Oh yeah, there it is.
Bridge now, 40190. So we've got the view of Triclops again and satellite feed three. And Chris, if we, if we could bear off a little to the left. Little to the left. I think we'll... Hey, Dan. Little to the left we have from Larry. A little, veer to the little to the left from Larry. Left of the heading you're going. Yeah, there you go. There you go, a little more. A little more. There we go. There you go. All right, All here right. we are. Yeah, well, look, we're trying to see, see it's good, stepping down, taking just another step down. Let's see. Yeah, there you go. He's, Dan's coming back on the headset. Give him okay. a second. All right. Yeah, I'm trying to, I think if we, if we're slightly more to the left, you, you see, we're going to, there, there's going to be the, the maximum depth of the ravine that we're, we're, there's a slight ravine we're coming up. Yeah. And if we just kind of trace that, I'd be very curious. Yeah, there you, there you go. There you go. Yeah. 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 This is this is the yeah, and this is and yeah, and Bob, this is this. We're now right, right at the the, the bottom of the ravine, in a sense. Bridge, bridge nav. Uh, three zero meters. Three five zero. Okay. Yeah, we only have the one scoop. Um, so that would be potentially contaminating that. Well, it would be contaminating that first sample. But would you want to collect more? Bob. Bob. If. Yeah, all right, go ahead, scoop again. I'll just take good notes of, of that we're doing two scoops. No, 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 don't do that. <laughs> got a nice compliment saying uh, they love watching us stream. And yeah, it's, it's already doing. Just know you are inspiring others with much love from the Philippines. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Taylor Ann. So Taylor Ann is time. very inspiring. She's uh, all of her knowledge. Yeah, I'd like to thank my community for that. And uh, the team here at OET been investing in me since 2019. So I've learned everything I know about the deep sea just from being in this control van. Awesome. Hey, Taylor Ann, would you like to describe a little bit about what, uh, what the data team has going on with this uh, photogrammetry data in the data lab. Yeah, so uh, this morning we were building models from yesterday's dive. Uh, so basically we've been able to use the footage from the Triclops cameras, all three different cameras from different angles to get a really good uh, wide array of uh, all the, the, the imagery that we're seeing here. Um, and then we'll use that video footage and cut it up into small images uh, that we will then use in this uh, reality capture program that we can align to create a 3D model um, and we'll then mesh this together to get some detail and uh, the texture and color that we're seeing here. 
So then that way we could potentially use that as an educational material, um, either in virtual reality uh, headsets or in classrooms, just to get a closer look at these corals and communities here. Bob, look at the sonar image and you can see the the thalwig of the regime, right there. Uh, uh, the thalwig of the ravine, right there. And on the sonar image, it's just perfect. We've got, we got with the, and th that's where this stuff is located, right in that. Right. Sorry, we're just gonna pause on chatter until we yeah, finish this collection here. No, you go ahead. Nav two zero three five zero. I don't know what that white thing is. <laughs> I'd, I'd, no, no, I no, I don't think there are ripples in there. That's that's backscatter that what you're looking at. Yeah, copy that. Copy.
Copy. I uh, hear any loud and clear. Yep. Chris, could you zoom out, please? And that was sample uh, zero, 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 four. for a sec. Thanks. Okay, we should be fine, I guess, getting the waypoint six. Where were we, Terry? We're actually quite close to the top. Yeah, no, in... And then if we could drop a target, is that for sample four? Roger, sample four. So what you just saw was us collecting some nodules uh, from this flow, basically, uh, that's been eroded down uh, into this kind of valley. And uh, we're going to do some geochemical analysis on it. All right, Dan, buckle up. Dr. Bayer wants waypoint six. Buckle up, let's do this. Yes, please. Yeah. No, you're doing just fine. Just just the way you're going. And it, 8 p.m., yeah. We could always adjust that, but I, I, th I think we should be, you know, I think we should be fine even to the last waypoint. We, uh, you're, uh, where are you? Oh, you're following this valley. Yeah, just following okay. this yeah, for a little while. Then we'll, then we'll turn, yeah, turn, you're turn run south. Out of, yeah, yeah. Run out of tether here. Yeah. Then I think we want to head uphill again. So. Roger. Left, please.
But right now we want to go up the hill. Hey, Jonathan, we have a question coming in from online uh, about downloading the, uh, the H2011 models on Sketchfab. Uh, they really, bridge, bridge there's some down. people out there that really want to 3D print them. Absolutely awesome. Um, we are working hard to uh, get all of those models up right now. Um, one thing that we just 3D printed on the ship is uh, the very first sighting of the columnar basalt that we had. Um, very unique feature. We just cleaned that up. It's uh, up on Sketchfab right now. If you want to 3D print in our observations from just three days ago, you can do that. Um, nice. And right now, on one of our, our big processing computers, we're working on modeling in near real time. There are first observations from this dive, although admittedly we are just still uh, waiting from the photogrammetry element, waiting for just a little bit more structure. Uh, corals or cliff faces or anything like that to be able to uh, model it. But again, looking for objects, the purpose of this cruise from the photogrammetry element is to not only get good photogrammetry, so, so representative 3D models of the world as we just troll along like this and, and mow the lawn going all the way up to the summit, but also walk away with these representative high quality individual models of corals, of sponges, of rock formations that host this kind of biodiversity. Um, so those elements we'd love to get up on, on public repositories like Sp Sketchfab. Um, one thing that I love, um, because uh, we're, we're connected to some of these video game industry uh, folks now with this project, right? Uh, and if you are somebody that is interested in participating or coding for video games, I'd really encourage you to reach out to us at Nautilus Live because this project will take off from, from the start and the results of these dives. Um, but these models aren't only used uh, for you know our specific goals and objectives of creating immersive experiences. We, we do want them public. We do put them up public so you can download them at, at home. And uh, if you're a game developer doing something uh, for the deep sea, like uh, sub ROV or subnautica, uh, one of the unique things that we'd love to give back to our public community listening um, that, is, that is involved in that or wants to get interested in that as a career, um, you can use those models and, and then be able to actually say, this is what a deep sea coral looks like. Here's another version of a deep sea coral. If you are modeling your own underwater environment, and creating simplified uh, models that should represent the real world. Um, so very excited to get all that stuff up um, as, as soon as we're able throughout this cruise. Thank you. Somebody's asking if if we're gonna be able to 3D print the moose fish. So oh. it's not a moose fish. All right. <laughs> so for the fish. internet artists out there, <laughs> if you're listening, I would really appreciate. Um, That's please, gonna be somebody on this. Please boat. tag. Please tag Nautilus Live and uh, hashtag moosefish. No. Um, for your representation of what a moosefish might look no. like. No. <laughs> I think we should also have 
a crew like art competition. Ooh. You know, I, everyone that has got to be like Daniela or somebody else on this ship <laughs> that is making fun of me and my moose fish. <laughs> or you know what? Maybe it's Maddie. It's uh, it's not Kristen because she's right next to me. Bridge, bridge now. Um, zero, and I know one, she, six, five. Well, she was on her phone a little while ago. <laughs> oh. It wasn't me, I swear. Hey. But oh, Maddie's. <laughs> Taylor Ann has some art supplies, so oh, I think we should all God. get together and draw moose fish. Yeah. Somebody who did who drew moose fish on there's no such thing as a moose fish out you know, out we there, will everyone. Make it happen. Just Ale. you know, I don't wanna t teach a misconception. That's yeah, the worst fear of a teacher is to <laughs> teach a misconception. But somebody did draw or were trying to draw moose fish on their cup, uh, their star from cup. There is a monkfish or a goosefish. No uh, moose fish. And I think that that's already <laughs> up on our Sketchfab now. It um, is. I, it's not really done fully because uh, to do the moose fish correctly, <laughs> I'm going to actually need, I'll need to pull in the Zeus data where we really zoomed in tight on it's, not a on it's beautiful. Fish. Stop calling it a moose it's fish. beautiful yeah, antlers. <laughs> you just can't. <laughs> Can't take that back now. I'm sorry. No, it's all in the highlights, Jonathan. Oh, well, I'm going to call it a moose fish on the highlights. No. Uh -huh. I'll go back into that. Video. <laughs> the great thing about names is that they can change with time. Thank you. It's true. It's true. It's true. This could be. She this speaks could true. Be Ali's, Ali's oh, fish, gosh. the moose fish. Wouldn't it be cool, like, if it was wearing like a little anemone hat or something, <laughs> and that's what would make it look like it had antlers? Yeah. So it'd be like Ooh. a little fish with the oh. anemone hat. Wait, I, I so like now want to draw the, the, the moose fish with, like, coral antlers. Yeah, they're like a <gasps> coral. Like, yeah, that would be really cool. Oh, all, right. all right. Taylor Ann, that's what we're doing tonight. Well, no, you're doing data processing. That's what I'm doing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see the results. I got you. I got you. So oh, my gosh. So somebody wrote in, I was the one who asked about the moose fish, and I'm not on the boat. I'm in Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh I am sorry, gosh. world. I yeah. told you so. <laughs> Ali, uh, you're famous. Oh, my, oh my God. God. Yeah, if there was a moose fish, it would be found in Canuck Waters. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, that, that fish. It was a very cool fish, but it was not a moose fish. <laughs> Stop. Slow mo is going to have a new like, sidekick. Yeah, slow mo slow sidekick will be the moose fish. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sorry about that. He's not on. So the peak we're heading to at, at uh, Waypoint 5 is on the order of about 1,350 meters. Um, but that's not the shallowest point on the seamount at all. We'll be we'll be heading to another one that'll be uh, closer to 1,100 meters. But even that's not the shallow. I think that if I remember, the shallowest point on the seamount is about 950 meters or something like that. Bridge, bridge nav. Four zero one six five. Hey, Dan. I don't think he's listening to SBL. Yeah. Jan Dan Jonathan's looking for you.
Yeah, that's just a radial pattern of a bas pillow basalt. Radiates out like that. But the amazing thing to me, Bob, is how fresh this stuff looks. Sea anemones, those lower ones. They open like a Venus flytrap. Is that a dead sponge there? Yeah, looks like it. Also have some uh, primnoid fans, the lighter pink colored corals, and then the darker pink ones. It look like to me that those are actually Paragorgia, which are different. Is the Paragorgia considered a precious yeah. coral? Yes, it is, yes. Looks like we're seeing another basket star there off to the right on top of a dead sponge, the yellow coral fans. Lots of dead sponges here. Yeah. Uh, looks like we're seeing some Acanthagorgia, these yellow fans. Taylor, and I just started up the photogrammetry again since it looks like we might be Roger. coming up on some nice yeah. more than yeah. one yeah. coral per 10 meters. We're approaching a, a local a local peak. Ooh, I like. But then we're going to drop over the other side. Uh, into I a like local peaks. Into a ravine and back up to even a higher peak. Look at this one, Taylor. Mm, that's yeah, cool. Uh, that's an Aridogorgia. Um, you can see. We also call this the firework coral. Firewood. Uh, coral? Firework. So like the coral. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can see why that. Uh, you got a basket coral, right? Yeah, so up there uh, on that dead sponge, it looks like we have a basket star and a flytrap anemone. <laughs> yeah, we're seeing an increase in diversity and slight increase in de uh, density as well here as we get closer to this peak, which is what I would expect. Do you want me to wait for you a little bit, Dan, or are you good? I can move a little faster here and get out from underneath you. Apply some additional beans. Roger. Yeah, beans. Beans, please, Dan. i just slow down there. I, I wouldn't mind if you uh, lateraled around the tippy top of that rock to bridge, bridge peek over to the, uh, zero, the port one, side six, of your five. viewpoint. I've done lots of those, actually. I had to... Uh, I Ooh. need to Look at this light the color. afterburners here underneath uh, Atlanta. What's that guy? Is that the Looks like we're getting there. Maybe pivot a little to the left. Some more Paragorgias. Looks like a mushroom coral there in the center. Some flytrap and enemies. There's a dead coral, or a dead sponge. Yeah, there's See a lot of them. Hold fast. Yeah, you get a lot of them up at the summit. Just a big debris pile of them. They've had a lot of years to accumulate. Going on that funny looking stuff to the left, just right here. That funny, like we've seen before, that's just a sedimented area. All right, never mind, got it. There's another one dead ahead dropped, or the sponges have dropped, yeah. We're dead ahead, right up there, left of that pink thing. And right, too. You see that at one? the basket star there? No, I was looking at the pile of stuff. Oh, the pile. In huh? between. So how old are those? Well, you can Is sort of get an idea of how encrusted they are with manganese oxide. There's that one land just to the top of that pink one. 
It's like a boneyard. So they're eons. That so. one's dead and hasn't fallen yet. I wonder if there are multiple generations of the yep. same one. Oh, yeah. You can see the hull fast changes. sticking up in the water there, dead ahead in the center of the screen. And then off to the right, look at the one off to the right with a beautiful hole fast just off yeah. camera. Yeah. See a hole fast. See that right the there, that hole fast, lower right now. Yeah. And then there's a hole fast on the rock without. I want that. Can you pick it up? <laughs> <laughs> it's a really large dead tetrapleura uh, right there. There's a Yeah. That would be one cool guy. And are they dead just because well, of the movement of the rock? Huh? That's erosion? A it is. Well, that's a fossil. Dead just because of old age. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, this one's very large, so it was probably hundreds of years old before. Or more. It died. And we keep seeing the association with the basket stars on top of the dead sponges, too. Yeah, they get up, get elevation. Yeah. Zoom in on All right, the, uh, I'm stopping the yeah, photogrammetry. Roger. Can you zoom in on the hold fast there? Yep, copy that. That one. Uh, that we have cool? a question from online asking, does it concern you to see so many dead sponges? Well, they die. Yeah, they've but, they've uh, been around a long time. Well, this has been here 80, sure. 82 million years yeah, sure of they, sponges. They, they've had a, had a long life, long wow. and good life. This is a you know paleontologist's dream. Have they evolved through time? Pretty <laughs> constant water conditions. Can we get lasers just for the size reference of this hold fast? Right that is cool. No place to put that though, right? <laughs> uh, lasers are on, you just can't see them. Where's How many it? come out of it? Yep. All right, copy. Just slowly out till you get the lasers in there. Yeah, there, there they are. Go. The one I got from uh, Chautauqua was completely covered in black manganese oxide. But that's but that's what's so curious here. We're, we're this not, is not. We're not seeing that. Well, it could be not that old. Okay, you can uh, go white things. Copy that. Cool. No, okay, don't worry about it. Just holding on for dear life here. I'm so excited. <laughs> no phone. Yeah, boneyard. So does that mean the one that's with the basket star on it is also millions of years old? No, it's you know, these fossil. don't look that super old. Like I say, the ones we saw in Chautauqua were black, huh. completely, and heavy sediment cover. Wow. Yeah. Is this a really long bamboo coral? So yeah, you're correct. That is a, a bamboo whip. Bamboo whip. I'm going to hold off on the ship move for a minute, Dan. Yeah, let me uh, get back underneath Atalanta there. On the wrong side of Atalanta. There's another one over the upper right. Beyond that mid one, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh. No, I'm going to come underneath you, so you should be able to actually come to your right. You can uh, come up five meters so for me. It's a headless sponge just for Halloween. <laughs> yeah, high grounds to your right. Shrimp.
So, Larry. Yes. See the little ones? I do. They may be the, the beginners. Well, if, if they're actually being concreted. Yeah. Or, or are we just seeing a, a range of fragments, the size of fragments? Had you sampled any from Chautauqua? Come on, it seems like the fan is louder. <laughs> yeah, that's because I uh, just turned up the fans. <laughs> <laughs> just got to make sure we keep these computers cold, or cool at least. Oops, I'm starting uh, photogrammetry again. Okay. Roger. Roger. And we're approaching the peak. So we are approaching the peak. Again, a great time for the Rocky theme song. <laughs> I'm liking, I'm liking all these. All these There's some more. Features. Our first sea urchin there. Yeah, I like urchins. I fell over with his rock. Dead sponges. Sponges. Jonathan, we did see a cuke. I don't think you were here for oh, it. Oh no, did uh, I miss the cuke? I, I think you had just like walked in or did something. Did you did you highlight it? I highlighted it just for you. Alright, thank you very much. We will uh oh. Right row. Oh. Yeah, we're all good. <laughs> uh probably fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was just to see if you're awake. Yeah, uh, well, you know, we have uh, All right, I'm throw in another a movie. visceral reaction to Blank the screen. satellite feed from Hercules going out because it could be an indication of communications issues with Hercules. So every time a screen goes black like that, you... Dun -dun. Yes, I have a lot of black screen memories. <laughs> <laughs> seen a few. sure if people can see on our Triclops computer, our data team led by Zach um, is downstairs right now. And uh, we have a live view of what he's working on in reality capture um, from earlier in this dive. Great job, Zach. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. Roger. Yep, that's it. Yep. Cool. Are we going to be able to pull that up? Uh, yeah, on, on, uh, on uh, the satellite feed three, maybe? Yeah. There we go. Jonathan, tell there us go. what we're looking at. So, um, 
our data team in the data lab right now. We have a couple of computers uh, with a program called Reality Capture. Um, and Reality Capture is one of many different programs that specializes in uh, photogrammetry, um, which is the process of building uh, 3D models based off of how individual uh, images change as you're moving a camera across uh, a location uh, space um, through a process called Structure in Motion. Um, so what you're seeing right now is actually a wandering, meandering path. Uh, you'll see Dan do this right now as he's kind of coming up uh, the slope here. Uh, you'll hear us call in the back row and request or, or just inform him and the rest of our team that we're entering photogrammetry mode. And when we say that, we uh, are looking for more coverage of the seafloor. And so you'll see in those individual images there, um, the little triangles that you can see, uh, hopefully on the screen, are the individual pictures uh, that were taken to reconstruct that portion of the model. And the model itself isn't textured yet, so uh, we haven't actually calculated the color lines, but that is the real 3D reconstruction of maybe um, about an hour and a half ago um, as we were coming up kind of this uh, less featured slope um, uh, of the seamount that we're currently on. And uh, this is interesting. You might ask, like, why, why did we choose to model this? Um, the reason is not because, of course, this is, is a particularly interesting spot with, like, tons and tons of coral or anything I like that. I don't the name of those for the life of me. But um, the, the reason is because we're I really trying to refine our process of Mushroom how coral. we ingest this level of data from the types of cameras that we have on ROV Hercules, um, this, this wide field camera array. So in this instance, um, we've adjusted settings. And every single day, we're adjusting settings and tweaking things left and right to make it more and more efficient. Um, so now, uh, within, within about one minute of taking an image um, on ROV Hercules, we can get it back here uh, to shore. Or I'm sorry, on top to top side on the ship. Um, and then every 15 minutes to a half an hour, uh, we're trying to get down the workflow so we can actually begin processing a model. Um, the, the goal, again, is this, this concept of near real-time modeling as we go up. Um, the side of a seamount uh, will geo-reference these models, so place the models on the correct spot on planet Earth, on the correct depth, um, and we should um, get to the point where we are able to model the entire dive track of a, of a dive like this, where we will kind of do our traditional exploration from the bottom of a seamount to the top. And uh, that model overlaid on top of the uh, work that you saw from uh, uh, Christopher Krasnowski's uh, Norbit, uh, that high resolution multi-beam data uh, from ROV Hercules, um, overlaid over the top of the two, it's gonna be a fantastic view of the, right. the landscape. And um, uh, that additionally can be overlaid on top of the ship's multi-beam data. Um, from our EK-80, our deep water multi-beam, which is another uh, view of like the entire seamount. So the goal is to create just a, a very simple but, but very complex at the same time um, view of the world or the seamount as we know it, where you can zoom out from the very coarse bathymetry to see the entire seamount. And as you zoom in and in and in, you see more and more detail until there's this 3D representation that you can fly around with a virtual a virtual Hercules. And I'm very impressed that what, what, what's impressive about this model is that it's featureless. Um, it, it's got only like little tiny rocks and we're mm -hmm. still achieving cohesion. We're still achieving a really good model. Yeah, it's like very detailed. Yeah, super detailed. A uh, lot so of the cameras that went into Jonathan, it. Jonathan, do you mean, you caught my attention there for a second. Do you, do you mean featureless in the technical sense or do you mean like featureless in terms of featureless matching or it's it's featureless in the low contrast setting okay for is in there you can't see many features on it there's not many okay, features but you're not on doing it. featureless but, but no contra matching contra across you're doing, in, okay. term, in terms of relief or in yeah terms of uh, contrast in terms of high con like uh, spot so so the way yeah, photogram for photogrammetry works is 
an algorithm will look for a high contrast point and it will look in the images from before and after that and it will look for the same high contrast point so if you have, if you have a flat checkerboard yeah that would Not be ideal if they, if they reach individually K, identified yeah, that, that is correct yeah. and what's what's difficult about this is these little pebbles look the same yeah. in some of these well, areas to you, they look the same to a geologist yep. each one has a distinct character yeah yeah so when the pebbles <laughs> goes to <laughs> <laughs> if you're talking to people who love rocks back here oh Larry. jonathan i know okay <laughs> Every pebble is special. <laughs> <laughs> to me, yeah. it's just like I look at all these crinoids, they all look the same. You know? <laughs> uh, every pebble is special, but sometimes an algorithm has a hard time picking out the difference between one pebble and another. You, and, you need a geology algorithm. We need geology, we need, we need yeah. Uh, well, I'm t I've totally lost track now of <laughs> where I was at. <laughs> a geology-aware feature extractor. That's what go. we need. Sounds like a research project. That sounds Somebody like can solid. get a dissertation off that. It, so, Chris, Chris, you, when, when, what were you meaning when? I, what was your interpretation of featureless from from your more advanced understanding of well, other so, workflows? So, like, so you have two types of feature matching. You have, or you have two types of type registration type yeah. problems. You have feature-based, which most image things are. They detect actual like objects in, in frame to frame and try to align them. And then you have featureless matching, which we use a lot in, we use featureless and feature-based matching in Sonar a lot. Yep. But featureless generally looks at the overall shape of the thing, and right? And so if you had like two maps, you'd like line them up until they align nicely. Or if you had feature-based, you'd say, oh, there's a, there's a rock, I, there's I, that I same just, rock, and you line them up. I just have to interrupt to look at this beautiful yeah, cross this, oh, yeah. of, a, of a... Oh, wow, look at this. Look at the... Of a pillow. That, that beautiful that really, pillow basalt. Yeah, that, that, really, that really is nice. But that, that's why I was asking. So when, when uh, Jonathan talks about features, he's not talking about relief at all. If, if you had a high-relief image, an image that had a lot of relief in it, but it was all absolutely one texture and color, you'd have great difficulty it would, creating. Yeah. You, so you're much better off with all sorts of... Uh, Little bits of high contrast point. Like this, this is actually great. Th this is really quite remarkable. I'm, I'm, um, oh, Larry, can you explain what we're looking at? Well, uh, I was thinking we're looking, at least on the right side, at the cross-section of... Uh, Part can of we a do pillow, a little a pillow uh, lava? I'm spinny, spinny. I'm quite confused bridge, bridge by the now. very smooth texture on the feature meters, that looks expected. like a shark's mouth on the left side. That that, uh, that that's very strange looking to me, and particularly the color, that light color. Um, it's very polished looking, but uh, on the right side, uh, it, it would look. It looks like uh, what you think of the cross section of a uh, of a pillow, but. I wonder if it was something that was captured in the lava instead. I don't know. Larry, what do you think about doing a good spin around this? Sure. If I, we have, if I, we have I, the tether. It's uh, if you, should I stop the ship? Are we going to be a minute? Jonathan, how long will it take? Um, I don't know. Dan Dan can do it as fast as he's comfortable with. What are you, uh, sorry, what do you want to do? Spin there? around this. Interesting yeah. feature. Yeah, no problem. Until until the until the butt of the uh, certainly looks like a shark's mouth to me. Or can you make it quick enough? <laughs> I think I can. All right. Make it quick enough. So the megalodon that was captured in the lava flow. <laughs> only from that angle. <laughs> bonk, bonk. But you see on top, it looks like classic pillow. Yeah. So I, I'm sure that's what we're seeing. But just, uh, this just had a very interesting texture on it. Very cool. Now, if we see a dorsal fin coming out, then, uh, then I know we're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, how it wiggled through there. Yep. Love it. Dan's doing his, he's, he's doing what I'd call peeking in the cracks. 
So to make a really complete model, you have to see what was there um, with it, with this technique. Um, so you know, getting a little bit of altitude and down, and that that's why we have our, our three camera array uh, four, including Zeus, um, is to get different angles, as many different angles at once. So we have a top down view. We have a very very wide uh, view from from down on the deck of the ROV. Um, and those, that gives us pretty quickly two different views of a uh, feature like this that we can use to rapidly construct a model. The two wide angle cameras give it a very eerie appearance. Okay. Put a turn in my tether doing that. I can take it back up there. Let's get some uh, Norbit data over it. Yeah. <laughs> Rapid. Yeah, super <laughs> high quality Norbit data with that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, well, whatever. This is all incidental.